This is how you come down. Another day. The book, the my hunting book is almost ready. <laughs> so I have a couple issues with uh, get the the cover to fit on there. It's funny they show you when you load your book cover onto it online. They show you the red, the border lines of how it's going to sit. Everything's so easy online these days. You would think they'd make it so it automatically you could make it fit. Uh, they go, nope, it's not quite right. Do it again. And then I got to send it to Roy Dye again and bother him. It's a pain in the ass. I don't like, it's tough for me to ask for help. <laughs> I don't, I like being able to do everything myself. But anyway, I'm sure it'll get there in the next day or so. What's going on now? There's noise in the background. It's my neighbor running an excavator. I should text him and tell him to shut up for an hour. <laughs> So if you hear that, that's what's going down. Now, hope everybody listened to the Sean Ryan podcast yesterday. I couldn't sleep last night, so I listened to another one. It's pretty, his very next one, I think it was. Some pretty alarming shit going on in the world. Very, very alarming. But anyway. Keep going at the task at hand here. Now, this looks like a fairly long one. Let's read this. Recent, I think. This is titled, What I Saw with a Couple of Picks. All right. I'm a terrible storyteller, so I'll try to describe these things as well as possible. I also have a very interesting question about what I saw. It all transpired the summer, transpired the summer of 2020. I've been retired since... 2014-ish. December 2019, I finally decided to make plans 
for a prospecting trip to the California High Sierras. I simply had a cabin fever and that I had never been in that high country. I had access to a couple of gold claims, so I began to research geology, California gold rush, etc. Research continued through January and into February. When the thought of the Sierras being ground zero for Sasquatch sightings stopped me upside of the head, or sorry, slapped me upside of the head. I've hunted big game in the high country most of my life, so I'm familiar with everything out there, so I thought. Side note, I just turned 60 years old, and I'm currently planning at least one more solo backpack hunt this year for mule deer, with at least a couple of scouting trips. After all, of my forest people, I really like that term, experiences, this summer may be interesting. Yes, there have been sightings not too far from where I'm going. So, in February of 2020, I started digging hard into learning everything I could about their behaviors, just in case I ran into a 10-foot tall hairy guy. I made a list of about 10 books and publications, all pre-internet and started in. My first problem was the instinctive fear of just looking at a good pick a patty and imagining a face-to-face -face of a larger pissed-off male. So, the first thing I did was have a custom life-size poster of Patty printed. That's seven foot four. Yes, her height is debated. So I could try and psychologically overcome the fear of just seeing one up close. After four months of reading and staring at my Patty poster, I needed to cut. I headed to Cali, west of Reno. Fast forward to Saturday morning, June 13th, 2020. I was standing on a west slope west sloping Bear Ridge looking at the geology when at close to 10 a.m. I heard some talking. Yes, that date and time is burned in. When I first heard the vocalization, I thought that it was a couple of prospectors talking and walking in the creek way down at the bottom of the drainage. About a minute later, I heard it again, and then there was no mistaking the fast chatter slash phrase identical to the Sierra sounds, except that it was only about 1.5 seconds long. Instant shock and wide eyes. There was zero fear, just the instant adrenaline rush. I'm sure you can describe it better for me. Pitcher is still hunting through the trees and spotting a bedded booner at 20 yards. He means a record book sized buck. My very first thought was, no effing way. Then my second thought was, I have to get a look at this thing. The sounds were coming from downhill and a little to my left. Down in the trees, approximately 150 yards, I snuck down as fast and as quiet as possible to get closer, roughly 50 yards, when I decided, plenty close. The ridge I was on was fairly clear of trees, except directly below me. The tree line started, so I guessed that it would cross in front of me left to right, staying in the trees that it was. So that is where I stopped and waited, and that is where I saw it, looking over the brush at me. It was about 40 yards downhill. I like my cargo pocket pants because I always carry a small lightweight handy cam on my right side for quick access. Yeah, same. I always got a camera all over me. I usually have my jacket pocket. And my phone goes in the zipper pocket here. I had a five to six minutes. I had five or six minutes to think about the cam and grab it. But do you think I did? Nope. It wasn't until I saw it looking at me that I remembered I had the cam. I looked down to grab the camera, looked up, and it was gone. So, quick summary, and keep this fairly short. In five or six minutes, I heard it talk saying the exact same phrase five or six times, including two or three double whoops. Mm, excuse me. After left, I gave it roughly 30 minutes to go about its way because I had zero interest in any kind of confrontation. I then went down and found and followed its tracks uphill to where I saw it, then back downhill for about 10 yards. It headed straight downhill after seeing me. Its best track that I found is at least 13 inches. Tough to tell because of the gravelly ground. No toe definition. 
but it had a little five inch track with it. So I'm 100% sure it was a mom. I'm speculating when I think it was talking to the little one and whooping slash looking for her mate or family. Now here's my question that bugged me for a couple of years. What the hell is an extremely shy female with a little one doing talking out loud, seemingly without a care in the world in the middle of broad daylight? There is the occasional ATV and hiker traffic in the area. It bugged me for a while until you started mentioning portals. Did you just get here? I've attached a couple pics to help visualize. Picture number one is obviously a Photoshop that I made to remember almost exactly what I saw. <laughs> you know what's funny? Side note. You just said it's uh, obviously a Photoshop. No, and you just said it clear English. Well, I said it for you. Guaranteed there's going to be people commenting saying, That's fake! <laughs> Mark my words, you watch. Excuse me. Picture number one is obviously a Photoshop that I made to remember ex almost exactly what I saw. What I saw was a jet black, very smooth, slightly coned head and no facial features. The pic is the exact spot of the sighting, sighting taken from a later video I did of the area looking almost direct west, a little southwest. So the sun would have been just left over, of overhead. I'm guessing that the shading from the sun, the dark skin and dark corneas is why I didn't see her facial features, plus I'm old. Picture number two is a tough angle because the camera is downhill looking up. Taken from some video I took of myself walking her trackway and standing where she was. I'm five foot nine and my reach is seven feet. For your favorite comment crew, yes it's legal to pack a sidearm in California National Forest. <laughs> Who gives a shit what anybody thinks? Pack away, legal or not, pack. A couple of days later, I headed back home to Utah and started, and started researching around my home. That was when I found your YouTube channel. The summer 2020 at home was huge in proving to myself of their existence. All four camping trips that summer, they let me know they were around each time and they didn't kick my ass. So, I'm also way past proving anything or intentionally looking for them, but I'm always aware. Same. The only questions left for me can only come from the forest people themselves, if possible. For the Utahans, Utahans <laughs> watching your channel, my intentional experiences happened within an eight mile radius of Strawberry Reservoir in two separate drainages, so just a heads up. I made myself a few rules, and number one is that I'll never divulge the exact location because I don't want them harassed. Well, it's taken me three days to just write this much, so I'm done. And there you go, Steve. That's my truth. Great job for bringing the subject to the forefront in an honest and open way. And it's especially good to hear from all of the native peoples. At least this gringo is listening. Keep trying to wake people up. Greg. P.S. I'm not going to give up my last name because it would be easy to track me down. I don't want to be pestered by wannabe Bigfoot hunters. P.P.S. I've left out a ton of details, so you're welcome. <laughs> For you. Okay, hold on a minute. Okay, got you, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, I agree. Now, uh, the photos. I think it's, for the way you were describing it, without having to look back at the email, I thought you sent a few. There's two photos. One of you standing there with your hand up, and then of uh, your your intentional Photoshop of the black head looking up at you. There you go. Your question answered, right? It's, it's funny how uh, so many people have multiple experiences, right? It's, and then you'll get people right in like the other day when a guy says, I've been in the woods 57 years, I've seen shit. Just the way it is. And then I think about this topic too, you know, people... A lot of people email in, quit saying where they where they are, quit saying the locations, the government's listening to you. They're going to go kill them. You know what? If you're following what's going on globally right now, I got a funny feeling that this topic is probably not even existent on any government's radar right now. I have a funny feeling there's a lot of people just trying to 
trying to survive in their position right now. And they're getting ready to pull the trigger on a whole bunch of bad shit. That is a for sure. That is a for sure. What happens when people have that genetic tick where they need to be in control at all costs. And they start to lose it. They will do anything to maintain it. And I think that there's a lot of real bad things lined up to pull the trigger on in case they lose control. So that's what I'm saying is I got a funny feeling this topic isn't really on the priority list for any government, anybody, anywhere right now. I don't think. Who knows? Who's next? Be safe out there, man. Good luck in your hunt. Good luck hunting. All right, here we go. Hello, Steve James lady here. It's been a while, maybe a week or two, that you stated on an episode that we don't yet have a recording of the deep growl. Well, actually, we do. Here's a recording captured in January 2019 from a Huron River Sasquatch wallow. A wallow. <laughs> I'm familiar with elk wallows splashing around in mud, so as soon as I hear the word described as a wallow, you could that's why I kind of semi-giggled. I'm not being a dick. I just had the instant visual of a Sasquatch splashing into my bath. Like an elk. I was not present for the recording. It was captured at the base of the TP structure above. The TP is alongside of a public path that many people walk, run, and hike every day. Max volume and earbuds will optimize this listening experience. You will hear other vocalizations as well. Speech can be identified by other subjects. These sounds are like something I would imagine coming from the depths of some tropical rainforest in some faraway exotic place. But these vocalizations were recorded in southern Michigan, within the Ann Arbor city limits. Believe it or not, truth is stranger than fiction. Peace be with you and yours, James. All right, uh, where is it? Hold on, give me a minute, I'll see if I can find this recording. There's the photo. I'm sure the photo. Classic uh, bunch of shit leaned up on a tree, been sent in a lot of times, seen a lot of times from people all over the planet. I don't know if anybody's ever seen a seven to 10 foot tall being stacking small limbs on a tree or not. Now, give me a second. There you go. Yeah, a little bit of distortion in there. It sounded like some wind and stuff mixed in. There's obviously some kind of sound. I don't know what it is. And then, uh, to be clear on what I was, uh, what you mentioned that I, what I asked for, said earlier about there not being a clear growl. There still isn't to me. Meaning, listen to me right now. If I were to make a growl. You guys heard that crystal clear, right? So what I'm saying, what I mean is the description that people are having about a deep growl that shook their body, physically shook their body. 
we still don't have that clear recording. I appreciate you sending. I appreciate you sending in that recording. I hope to God you're not an oversensitive person like I've had in the past when people send me something and I just give my honest opinion and then they send me hate mail and blow it gasket calling me every word name in the book because I did not fully agree with their stance on something, which is silly, right? But for me, I'm surprised that nobody has that clear recording of a growl, deep growl, that literally physically vibrates your ribs. Or is that even possible to get a recording of that sound and deliver it to the people with the recording? I don't know. You know what I mean? <clears throat> we'll see what comes, right? Appreciate you sounding that in, man. We'll see what comes. All right, here we go. Who's next? This is titled, What I Seen. Hello, Steve. I'm new to the channel. My name is Devin. Feel free to say my name. It was recommended by another listener of yours who is also a good friend of mine to share what I have experienced and what I had encountered in this area. I've lived in Rock Springs, Wyoming, just over a decade now. It was 2011 and I was 16 at the time when I saw this cryptid, this thing. For context, being a teenager in these parts doesn't have much to offer, except driving around town, traveling the desert trails, or going to the old abandoned ghost towns or coal camps that once belonged around in the area. I just ended my shift at a fast food joint around 11 at night. My buddy had arrived to see if I would want to hang out and make a couple of laps around the town. After 45 minutes of driving in circles and bullshitting, the topic of ghosts and what we had encountered throughout life had come up. We now decided to drive to Winton and see what we could find. Everyone has spooky stories about Winton, urban legend type shit. The road isn't paved and has since changed. After driving a rough road, gravel road, at 25 miles per hour and only being about a mile away from Winton, my buddy decides it's getting late and wants to start heading back. I didn't argue. I was getting sore from the road and just wanted to sleep. He turned around and we started our way back. These next few moments are cemented in my mind till the day I die. About two miles from where we turned around and maybe three miles from the asphalt, it happened. We were riding in silence. I was texting on my phone. And as we go around this bend in the road, I hear my buddy shout, What the F is that? I look up and I see it. Time seems to slow down. As soon as he said that, I see this thing charged towards the driver's, the driver's side headlight. The distance was maybe 100 feet max. From the middle of the small hillside where I seen it to the road where we passed it, it had, got, it had covered ground quickly. In the moment, it felt like it could reach the driver's... Sorry. In the moment, it felt like it could reach the driver's side mirror. I can still picture what it looks like. It was on all fours as it charged. This thing was carved in short white or gray fur and appeared skinny. I can only describe a size as smaller than a horse, but bigger than a dog. In a, in a hunched position... Its front legs slightly smaller in size from the back legs. The knee joint helped notice that feature. As it closed the gap between us, its face could be seen. Dark, reddish looking eyes, mouth slightly open, showing very sharp snarling teeth, and a squished looking snout. He was only driving slow because of the washboard road when it ran at us. Thank God he hit the gas and swerved away. Scared the shit out of us. We hit the pavement doing 70 miles per hour just to get away, kicking up dust, losing that creature. I don't know if this is a dog man, skinwalker, or just a crazy animal. We passed that area no more than five minutes before this happened. I didn't see nor see it, nor any dead wildlife. And I say this because these people I've told say it was probably a sick wolf or coyote even though they could even though they could be in that area i've never heard of wolves charging a passing vehicle 
I don't know if the next thing is just random or part of what previously transpired. When I finally got home around 1, I was laying in bed and get a call from my buddy who was driving. I couldn't hear him when I answered, so I hung up and called him back. He answered and started asking why I called. Confused, I said, he called me. The next day we show each other's call logs and it shows us calling each other at the same time followed by me calling him. He passed away a few years ago and this experience is something we will always tell people. We would always tell people. We could, we could confidently verify the details for each other. I've only told a couple of close friends and family members since his passing up until now. This experience has been on my mind lately. As crazy as it sounds, I wanted to go through it again. I'm always going back to that area on different occasions, hoping it could make sense of it. Just never, just never at night, and always out of there before a sunset. The only problem is I have experienced other strange things that cause more feelings of the unexplained. Stuff like having the heavy winds disappearing completely, then sound of footsteps running up behind me, charging closer and closer, causing me to turn around in fear, only to be struck with extreme terror upon noticing that no one is there but me. But that's for another time. Thank you for listening and taking the time to read this. Thanks for taking the time to send it. Now let's go back to what you described. This is my shift. Everyone's spooky at the next moments. Sorry, guys. Give me a second. I see this thing. Covered real quickly. Covered in short white or gray fur and appeared skinny. I can only describe its size smaller than a horse, bigger than a dog. In a hunched position, its front legs slightly smaller in size. From the back legs, the knee joint helped notice that feature. As it closed the gap between us, its face could be seen. Dark, reddish looking eyes, mouth slightly open, showing very sharp snarling teeth and a squished looking snout. Okay, that was it for the facial. I was hoping for a little, well, I'm curious, I mean, for a little more description of that. Ears? Ears, bangs, mane, uh, hair, fur flowing behind it, canines, eyes glowing or reflecting in the headlights, hyena look to it, but not, it's definitely not a Sasquatch thing, right? Sounds creepy. And who knows, did that thing just arrive, right? Did that thing just arrive? Was it not familiar with vehicles yet? Where did it come from? What the F was it, right? Got one guy emailed me, didn't want to be share his story for British Columbia a handful of years ago, but it's it's it sits on a little shelf in my head because it's in BC. The guy's a fellow indoors person, and he saw this thing walk in front of his truck while he was camped fishing. It walked in front of his vehicle with attitude in the headlights, so that his back line was over the hood of the truck and it was kind of I think he said it was kind of like a, almost like a hyena-ish type of thing that didn't know what it was. It was huge and it scared the shit out of him and it walked like he wasn't even there. So I wonder if that's a similar thing. Creepy, right? Creepy shit. Thanks for sending that in, man. Holy, here's a long one. All right, I'm going in. <laughs> I'm feeling nervous. Here we go. This is titled Lifelong Following. Please do not use my name. Gotcha. Hello, Steve. I've followed you since the start. I even heard you refer to me on one of your podcasts. You said there is some pushy guy wanting to help you and keep all the emails straight. <laughs> that was me. I kind of knew you would get thousands of emails. I have double master degrees and had just shut down my podcast, so I figured I could set up file systems to keep a record of every email, even break down each email to, to filing by type of contact. Anyway, now mine. Okay, man, yeah, I appreciate that, but you got to admit, how could I do that today? I can't do it. I cannot give access to my email or my personal shit to anybody I meet online in an email. It's not going to happen, right? Not going to happen, no matter what. 
I was on a 12, I was a 12 year old that spent the weekends and summer on my dad's farm in Alamaki County that is located in Northeast Iowa. This farm butts up to the Yellow River Forest and the area is not prime farmland. The farms had flat spots where corn was mainly grown, but for the most part, the land is mature walnut trees, bluffs, steep hills, and caves. The Yellow River area is a recreational area for trout fishing and camping. There are natural springs in the area that bubble right out of the ground and run to join the Yellow River. The water runs a consistent 44 degrees year round. The farm was on the lower level of the area and had steep bluffs and hills on the north side of the farm a few hundred yards from the back door of the house. The road that went to the top of the steep slope ran crossways up and down and was not a pleasure to walk up, let alone drive a tractor up. The barn in the farmyard was north of the house and about 100 yards from the start of the steep landscape. The hills were close to impossible to go straight up and walking in a crossing pattern up the hill allows you to get to the top a little easier. It was fall because the leaves were turning and some had started to fall. It was an overcast day, and at 10 a.m. the haze had lifted, so I was going to check our traps. Remember, it was over 50 years ago, and there was no internet, and we had the encyclopedias in the dining room for knowledge. Also, Send your mind back to 1967 and the abilities of a special effects in the movies. Of these special effects in the movies. Life was not like today for getting information and making movies with your phone. The creature from the Black Lagoon and the Blob were the scariest movies around. Anyway, I grabbed the 410 shotgun and left the house about 10 a.m. There are traps set at the top of the hill. There's a large holler that was about a half a mile from the house and close to the beginning of the spring that I wanted to climb down after checking traps at the top of the hill. I headed out of the farmyard and climbed the fence on the north side of the barn that put me on the path between the steep slopes to the north and mature corn in the south. <clears throat> Excuse me. I started going up the hill at an angle to get to the top by the time I was close to the holler. I stopped and loaded the shotgun. It was a 410 pump, and I put five shells in it. I went to the top, I, sorry, I went to the left to go in the woods and start up the hill. The woods were fairly clear of a lot of undergrowth or a lot of brush, and many of the trees are mature. The point I'm trying to make is that I could pick my path and kind of see for a very long distance in the woods. I could see a reasonable distance, but of course, trees would block your view. I'd gone into the woods about 300 yards and had gone about 100 yards up the hill from the path. I was making my way over and up the hill watching my step to avoid tripping as there were rocks under the overgrown grass that could trip you up. I was holding the shotgun in the ready position with the barrel up and safety on. There was a tree 15 feet ahead of me that I would be passing really close on my set trajectory. I was moving slowly. And all of a sudden, a fox ran in front of me. It was behind the tree that was basically the next tree that would have been on my right side. This fox was big, and I raised my gun and heard in my head the word, Don't. And I fired, hearing the word, sorry, and I fired, hearing the word, shoot, after pulling the trigger. I hit the fox and rolled uphill like an acrobat and kept running without missing a stroke. I stood there and watched as the fox ran straight up the hill until it crested the top and was gone. All the time it was going uphill, I heard in my head, Why did you shoot me? I told you not to shoot. I was confused were these words, where these words were coming from, so I answered in my mind saying, I shot you because you jumped out and scared me. The voice said it was only having fun and scaring his fun. Then it stopped. <laughs> this sounds crazy, man. I walked to where I hit the fox. There was blood and hair. I followed the path that took up the hill. Now this fox went up that hill in a matter of seconds, and it took me over five minutes to get to the top. When I got to the top, the landscape went back down into another section of woods as far as you could see, but no fox. I told my dad that it was that it was more than one color, 
and he said that he didn't want to hear about this fox ever again. I now believe he knew something because he spent time in the very same woods. He could go out with a twenty-two rifle and sit down under a tree and come home with six squirrels. He said that if you sit down and don't move, everything that is in the woods will just walk past. He had to know because he talked to all the other farmers in the area. They had to know there was a giant fox in the woods. Fast forward about 50 years. New website for Bigfoot encounters. I thought, yeah, so some guy that's going to say that he saw a Bigfoot, big deal. Big deal until I watched that he is telling the stories sent to him about encounters to help people cope with their trauma. He said something one day that struck a nerve with me and it should become common knowledge. He said it was not just Bigfoot, but all the other creatures running around out there in the woods. You see, I've been listening to people tell their stories and other sites about encounters, and have found a website about dogman encounters. I listen and can hear the trauma in their voice. I can tell if somebody's reliving it or just telling a story. Some people are cruel to those that are traumatized by encounters, and then spread dis disinformation to shut down conversation on this topic is enormous. I'm positive Bigfoot is out there, but I've never seen a Bigfoot. I heard somebody say they would rather be a believer than a witness. There's a long list of creatures that people say they have seen out in the woods. I know some are folk stories, but when you have enough people seeing the same myths, it doesn't matter if you have a picture, body, or whatever. I think investigation is in order. Sasquatch is proven. Done. So with all the time spent to deny the species is out there in the forest of America, what else do we deny that is as real as real gets? Here's another fact. Who cares where they came from? All the different creatures or, speech or species that are running around out there, who cares if they were here before us? Come from another planet? Made in a lab under our mountain somewhere? What is the extent of the situation? Besides Sasquatch, what else is out there in the forest? Think about the technical abilities of our military. They have ways to see through the trees and, and provide detailed images of whatever is out there. <clears throat> Excuse me. I started listening to the people talk about their dogman encounters on YouTube with this guy that seems to put people at ease. And they spill the guts about everything they saw and felt. I wholeheartedly believe some of these people telling their story is right back there looking in the eyes of something that some people have no clue about and dismiss them. I was unsure if this dog man isn't just an ugly Sasquatch or something else as I listen and research and search around the internet. I find some guy that says the dog man he saw jumped some 50 yards and struck the landing like a gold medal winning gymnast on a downed tree. So I started looking into that aspect and still listening to people talk about their encounters on this website. Then here is where we go off the rails. This Dogman podcast shows different drawings of what a dogman looks like. I was watching this podcast and it has something else on the second monitor I was viewing at the same time. And I just happened to look at the screen playing dogman encounters on it. And there it was. The face of the fox that I ran into 50 years ago as a boy in the woods. It all came flooding back to where I now know every aspect of the encounter. That was no fox. The tree that concealed the dog man was only about 12 to 14 inches wide. So the only thing I don't know is, did the dog man jump down out of the tree? Or was it standing behind the tree and I wasn't paying attention? When I first saw the dog man, it was airborne and landed full side profile in front of me. It was within 15 feet when it landed. Wow, that's pretty close. We locked eyes and it knew I was going to shoot. It knew it because it was looking at me with a look of don't do it. Standing in front of me on all fours, we're looking at each other. The face, the head, the short neck, let me read that again. The face, head, and short neck were a brownish red that made me think it was a fox. Remember back then in time, the Bigfoot name had not even caught, it, caught on yet. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, as I now remember, the woods were silent, and it scared me when it landed. We were looking into each other's eyes, and I pulled the trigger. 
And here's the part of the story where my dad says I was full of it. I fired a shot and the dog man jumped and did a forward somersault uphill. I was flabbergasted and didn't chamber another shell. <clears throat> I just stood there and it seemed that the message from the dog man to not pull the trigger got through to me too late. Because while he was doing the somersault, the message hit me to not shoot. From that moment on, I stood there and watched the dog man as it ran up the hill until it was over the crest. So here is precisely what I saw. First, the face was a brownish red and looked like a fox. I saw him eye to eye from 15 feet away and his face was short haired. The snout was very long and reminded me of, of the nose of a wolf in an old time cartoon. Very short neck, but long enough to allow the head to entirely turn and face me. The body of the dog man is as follows. I saw a profile <clears throat> and then I saw it from another angle until I saw the back end view before it crossed the crest of the hill. The hill to the top would have been about 200 yards and very steep. The profile at the time reminded me of the Arkansas Razorback mascot. Then it was only the hair that matches because it was more like a side view of a buffalo. I know somebody out there is going to say it was a buffalo wolf, but wait till the story is over. The chest on the dog man was massive and it humped up at the back and its arms are attached higher up and that makes them all the longer. The arms were not anything like a wolf. The front arms seemed to be very muscular and the hair was sparse so that I could see the ripples. The upper arm was shorter, like on a human's arm would be, but the lower arm size is enormous in length compared to a human's arm. The forearm was oddly long. I saw both hands and didn't notice what would be a thumb. I saw long curved fingers and fingernails. They're in a bent position and when the dog man ran on all fours up the hill, the hands were past its rear end to about half of the distance to its tail. The tail was about the size and the same shape as a blade on your ceiling fan. I remember telling my dad that the tail was nothing like a fox. The colossal chest and the back tapered down to a waistline that matched any greyhound at a racetrack. The hind legs were like that of a lion in shape. I saw the lower part of the leg and it was black in color and rippling with muscle all the way down to its toes. They were digging in the ground. This creature ran out straight up the steep slope with a two by two stroke. The front arms together and the rear legs together. I estimate 200 yards up a grade hard for human to go up. It took 10 steps and had landed in front of me in my path. 15 feet, we looked at each other eye to eye. I thought this was crazy that the fox made eye contact with me. Now I know and all the memories are all intact. I remember that the feet and hands were digging in so profoundly as it was moving away from me. The ground had old leaf fall and some new, but the ground under the leaves was wet, so the dogman was sinking in and peeling out every stride. The dogman took about 10 strides up the hill and was gone. I remember just standing there as it went over the crest of the slope in front of me like I was in a trance because then the trance broke. I thought that I had just shot the biggest fox in the world and I had to follow it. <clears throat> I went up the hill, but it took me at least five minutes. The forward somersault up that grade and the stride it took. Is it a wolf? A buffalo wolf? No. Looking at the drawings, no single one matches what I saw precisely, but if you use a piece of this one, and a part of that one, it matches like it was a photograph. It has been suppressed in my memory for 50 years, and there is one of those pictures of the dog man's face jogged in my memories. I had buried that as a strange fox encounter in the woods, and now I'm a knower of dog man and a believer of Sasquatch. These species are out there in the forest. What else is out there that we are not aware of? 
What about this translucent creature that has been videotaped? What about the little people that were just discovered? How many different species are out there? We. Sorry. How many different species are out there? We. LOL. About. Oh, I get it. What we laugh about, but are showing up on security cameras all over the planet. The Navy and the Air Force have both said that the released videos of the UAP caught by the pilots on the cameras are real. What is flying around our planet and flying circles around our military, our best military jets? Our jets can't come close to following these flying objects. I'm not paranoid, but consider myself a realist. Can I stop a dogman or Sasquatch that wants to kill me? No. But how about being aware that for some reason we have been shamed to not talk about these things? Right? Right? <clears throat> well, if you have what it takes to never be affected by these things, I guess you don't care they are out there. It also makes a difference if you believe in the Word of God. I think they are out there for more than just existing in unused land. There's nothing cute and cuddly about these myths in the woods. Yes, that was no fox. That was no wolf. That was not anything that as a young man I have even had any words for. That is partially how the event was ever, pres ever present in my mind, but buried. I've worked and moved around the country through the 50 years, through the 50 years, from the meeting in the woods up to today. I've lived in places all over, and I've even driven tractor trailer in every state as well as every province of Canada. Looking at a YouTube page from a guy that just says what is what, some call him the no bullshit guy, which fits him. And he has over 20 years in the woods as a professional guide. This guy is the one that made a statement at the start of my chain of events that has brought me to writing this. He said something about the people that can't handle Sasquatch are going to have a real hard time handling the other things that are out there running around in the woods. I'm positive this sentence was my launch pad. I listened to one podcast where the writer was explaining mind speak. They all can communicate through mind speak, if you are listening. People don't listen. And that's why they paralyze people with growls and such. I'd moved from Minnesota to North Carolina. I was sitting in the kitchen when a voice said, So, you are listening. Okay, if you're going to criticize what is honest to God's truth, you may not want to know the rest of the story. Knowing what is real and what is real in our world is not knowledge that everyone can handle. I lived it and understand and I have a hard time with it only because it is so incredible and is being kept silent and you are a nut if you talk about these things. I wonder if we only use less than 10% of our brain. Is telepathy comminution? Maybe you meant, or maybe you meant communication? Or mind speak? Right there at 11% usage? I was listening. And said as much to myself and the voice said very well. The voice told me that it was the fox that I had met in the woods over 50 years ago. It told me that he had tried to tell me not to shoot him, but I fired before I got the message. I explained that he had jumped out and didn't say anything prior, so as a young lad with a loaded gun I fired. The voice was telling me that I was an evil human for doing that, and we had a heated discussion. Trust me, I know this sounds to those of you that don't pray or believe. Oh, sorry. Trust me, I know how this sounds to those of you who don't pray or believe. I told him that if he was planning on jumping out only to scare me, why didn't he start communication before he jumped out? I have a good point here, that he could have controlled my young mind and then made his scare. I told him that it was his own fault for getting shot. Dogman species love to scare the crap out of humans. Anyways, I had hit him with the shot as I thought. I had damaged his left side, but a close-up direct hit from a 410 did not kill him. Where do we go from here? This dogman vowed revenge on me for shooting him, and as an apex predator with senses that humans can't comprehend, such as the mind speak, He's been waiting to enact it upon me. 
Dogman can communicate with Sasquatch. These creatures can communicate with any species, and that is why the environment around them will go silent when they are near you. They want you to wonder why and start the mind speak ability that we all have. For some reason, he says that is part of the fear factor. Dogman wants the silence so it can put thoughts in your head and you'll hear the noises they want you to hear. The fear is their glory and they work at it continually. I will call this Dogman my Dogman because he said he was not going anywhere. He's sticking with me due to his vow of revenge. Remember how I said that I've been all over the country working and also driving tractor trailer? My Dogman has kept tabs on me every part of my life's journeys. Why has he not taken his revenge yet? Why is he just waiting in the woods? My dog man and I have discussed the revenge and where are we going from this point forward. I've let him know that I'm not going to just stand there and allow him to take his revenge unless he catches me in the woods unarmed. He laughs at guns, but knows that he can be hurt by one. I promised my dog man that I will never allow him to do his evil with my lord on my side and a big pistol in my hand. The dog man doesn't fear the lord like a Sasquatch does but is being held back from getting revenge. When does it happen? It will be like a switch has been thrown. The creatures will be given permission to take out humans. And my dog man had ensured me that I am his first stop. Jesus is with me. His angels will defend me, even if it is only enough time to get a few shots off. I'm praying that when the switch is thrown, my faith and training will allow me to take my dog man out big hollow points in the right spot. I've told my dog man that I am ready, and regardless of who comes out on top, I'm going to inflict damage to him. If he wins the battle, I'll be with my savior, and my wars will be over. I wear the armor of God, and tell you all that you need to put on the armor and nurture your relationship with Jesus Christ. I was off work and out driving my Z, Z, and when I hit the home stretch to my house, I was hitting it, hitting it hard, so a voice hit me and said, quote, Hey, you want to see a VW micro bus? End quote. So I said, sure. And the voice said, look to your right. There was the dog man running along the tree line with his body actually looking squared off with a head on the front, running on all fours. His back brushed a tree branch, and that told me that I can measure that branch. I got home, grabbed a couple guns, and took one of my dogs, and we went to the field, where the dog man ran. There was not a single track. I started to question, I was, question if I was seeing things. I measured the branch, and it was right at five feet. So this thing was five feet tall on all fours. I started to use a search pattern on the bare field by going in an ever-widening circle pattern. I found deer tracks that looked like there was a fight, but only deer tracks. I saw a small weed with disturbed dirt under it. I lifted the weed and there was the track. It appeared the dog man took down a deer and when they were zigzagging around, he left a print. The pads and the toenails were visible and were about four inches into the dirt. The print was as large as my hand. I had shut down the conversation that I'm going to get a shot off that will hit him in the right eye and scramble his brain. I also told him that if he was a dog man. It is said that you have eyes that turn on like an old style flashlight. I said with mind speak to show me. I've learned to shut down mind speak, but can use as needed. I usually get up at 3 a.m. to go to the bathroom. About a week after seeing the dog man running along the field, I went to the bathroom about 3 a.m. I stepped into my bathtub and took out and looked out the window over the tub that I could see the wood line. I stood in the bathtub and see a fog coming out of the woods and is about 8 feet wide and 12 feet long. It's dense and it moves close to the ground to the backyard of the neighbor. I see two lights in the fog and they look like old cheap flashlights that are discolored and kind of yellowish but not yellow. I said in my mind speak, so if that's you in the fog, prove it. I said, close your eyes. They both went out. I said, open only one eye and the light came on. I said, blink your eyes, and you said back to me, I'll not play your effing parlor games. So the fog backed up right into the wood line and was gone. My dog man is bummed out, not happy with me. 
I've lost my fear and he's lost his power over me. Funny, because he followed me for over 50 years. And I had no idea until a few months ago. <clears throat> With the dogman using fear as their goal, you can see how many dogmen would be really unhappy that all fear is gone. He got a little concerned out of me when he first spoke to me, but I knew what was up right away. I look back to all the time that I spent in the woods, and this dogman has had many opportunities to show itself to me. Why is he showing up now? This dogman has decided to keep tabs on me through all the, those years, and that was good enough. Since I believe in God as guiding my life, it must be that way for a reason. This all has a point to the story somewhere. Mine speak words from a cryptid that doesn't exist. I've told my son that I would be a bad parent if I tried to convince him that there were no monsters. They are real. And I said to him that they are real. Ever wonder why these creatures are so elusive? These dogmen can jump half a football field or more. So when you think you saw one and look back to do a double take many times, they just jump and land away from you. Other times they can close their eyes and you won't see their eye shine. <clears throat> Where we put on camo to go into the woods, they use forests to blend in. I believe that the myths, the fairy tales, and the cryptic creatures are based on folklore that is real. Now look at all the people that are trying to share the reality of their situation and they are ridiculed. And final note, <clears throat> I have moved again, and I'm about 80 miles from where we made from where he made me aware that he has followed me for years. Maybe that is why I've moved about 20 times in my life. He was there, making me feel uneasy, and I would move. So in my new house along the coast of North Carolina, I see signs of the creatures that are out in the woods everywhere. Whether it's dogmen, Sasquatch, or little people, there's shit in the woods, out in the woods, and they follow these woods right up to your house. One night, 11.30 p.m., I'm talking to a lifelong friend that lives in Iowa. I was sitting in the southern part of my house where the attached garage had been turned into a laundry room and a game room. And there was a loud thud on the roof right over my head. My friend heard it over the phone and asked, what was that? I said I wasn't sure, sat there in silence. Then whatever it was started to walk up to the peak of the roof and down to the other side. It walked in a zigzag motion from one end of my house to the other. I told my friend, I had to go and I told my friend I had to go check this out. He wasn't out there when I went out. So I cleansed my roofs in the blood of Jesus Christ along with all my property. I think he wanted me to know he had caught up to me and was hanging out. Keep on telling the truth, brother. Richard, okay man, it's a hell of a story. One hell of an experience, and you know as well as I do. There's gonna be a lot of people on here going, yeah, right, right? We weren't there. It's quite the experience, quite the memory. There's some crazy ass shit going on out there, no matter what. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's funny though, when, I, when I'm reading this, I, I started thinking about that guy that was in that interview online. The Sasquatch investigator, and all of a sudden something had a hold of him. He changed him, broke him. And he's breaking down and crying his eyes out. Absolute frickin' messed up, recalling his experience with this thing, telling him he was his prey. And on and on and on. A whole bunch of real crazy ass shit. But you could see this guy was a frickin' mess. Kind of uh, made me think of that one. Whatever you ran into, is that a similar experience? Similar to what basically destroyed that man. I forget his name, but... There you go. Take from what you will to leave it. I wonder how many people out there have, have had a similar experience. You don't know, right? I don't know. You never know. All of a sudden, because this guy cracked open the dam, maybe 200 people are going to email in from all over the world saying, holy shit, that happened to me too. Who knows? I don't know. But you only find out from talking to each other. <clears throat> and the guns thing. 110% guns can hurt all these beings because they let us know that. Right? Even was it yesterday I explained what that hunter told me in British Columbia, whereas his friend, who was more trigger happy, put the gun up and that thing really hit from him. Well, if guns can't do anything to them, why are they hiding from the gun, right? How come so many people 
have had this mind speak thing happen to them telling them don't you raise that gun or you're gonna die well nobody's gonna say that unless the guns a threat to them right anyway I wonder what it would have happened if you had smoked that thing if you were carrying say a uh, 300 short mag wonder what would have happened that day obviously they can bleed obviously it can hurt them so I wonder what would happen and then you got so many people saying don't shoot a dog man they they uh they take out revenge in your ass all their buddies will come and get you it's a tough thing to tough thing to bring receipts for isn't it a statement like that it's a tough thing to supply the receipts after you make that bold statement don't shoot a dog man all his friends will come and get your ass how do we know this but anyway now i'm going to give you guys an example just so you know you know, a lot of people say, you hear a lot of people when they say, I, I, I wouldn't have, I wasn't dreaming of shooting this thing because I think I didn't want to piss it off, right? I don't know if you've ever been close to a moose, especially a northern North American moose. The farther north they go, the bigger in the body they get. And I used to guide at near the top border of British Columbia, guide in the Yukon. Moose are freaking huge. I had a moose, big bull moose, standing about 12 feet from me one time. And I'm literally looking up at it like this huge over a thousand pounds easy easy over a thousand probably more like 15. anyway here's an example of what a hunting rifle can do to something that weighs around 1400 pounds okay now listen to this uh it's my old guy partner two of us two hunters the hunters weren't with each other they're both they're on a big sheep hunt we already got them the rams and they both had a moose tag as a bonus so we went up to this place where typically You'll find bachelor groups of bull moose together up in this big plateau before the rut kicks in, right? Anyway, partner and this hunter go off down to go after this moose. I'm watching my spotting scopes. I'm watching the, the round field of view, right? I'm watching my spot scope. And that moose was in my field of view. And his ass is to me, and his head was pointing away from me. Okay? And in my field of view, here comes the guide and the hunter from the left. So they're shooting straight across my field of view at this 1500 pound top of the antlers 10 foot tall bull moose okay and all of a sudden you see the moose go like this is this is the moose upright his body's upright top goes bam smokes over like this being his top of his back wham and he goes flying sideways trying to get his feet underneath his body but couldn't and then boom down he goes so that was a single shot from a 338 mag which is a pretty big pretty big rifle but just so you know when you hear people for what i know of hunting and guiding big game big game uh in british columbia and in alaska when i hear people say you know i wouldn't want to shoot that thing i don't want to piss it off and everybody also says their average guesstimation is somewhere around anywhere from 600 to 1,000 pounds. Easy. Well, from what I know firsthand, a 338 Magnum will slam a 1,500-pound slab of meat sideways about 12 feet and then slam it to the ground. <laughs> right? So knowing that, not that I'm encouraging anyone to do it, but... I wonder what would have happened if that day this man shot the quote fox with a 300 anything. I wonder what would have been the outcome then. Would it be standing over top of this thing <laughs> that nobody's ever seen before ever? Up close, you know what I mean? But anyway, babbling. What are we doing now? I gotta get going. I gotta get ripping. The sun's actually out. Crazy. Goes from snow to spring. Just like that. But apparently it's going to get cold snow again. Anyway, got to get going. Got to remember to put on the recording that the man sent in on this video. And then i um, going to go up and keep getting stuff done and keep getting caught up. Keep sharing voices. And then I'm going to, I think I am back almost on track to get a hold of people. And uh, put some more time in here. Share my story at howtohunt.com or tell my story at howdon.com. All right, just send it to one, not both. I'll be back.